bow in our prayer. Our Father, we're thankful that thou art a God of comfort. We're thankful that you have promised that we're a contrite heart. Please, before thee, thou would answer. And we're thankful that we're gathered today witness of thy faithfulness to a soul that entrusted her life in thy hands and in her days on this earth. And we're very conscious that this is not an end, but this is a day of a continuation of that relationship that was established, realizing a need in her heart to have thy son Jesus influence her life. And we're thankful that she leaves that testimony. And she understood her life was not her own. But as Jesus spoke and, and taught, uh, he came not to do his own will, but he came to do thy will. And we're thankful that you understand our emotions, our grief, when we mourn. And we're thankful that we can take our cares to thee. You mourned when Jesus went to the cross and died for our sin. The separation that Jesus was willing to go through and suffer death that we need not go through because he lived a life that was perfect without sin, yet not a self-righteous life, not a condescending life, but he was very approachable, and we're thankful still today that he intercedes at thy right hand, that we can go and take our cares to thee. So we pray that thou would look kindly upon our gathering, and that thy word would be uplifted, and that thou could be glorified, and that we would know thy presence drawing near to us as it was in, our, in the life of our sister, Odessa. Hear us and help us in these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have a, script, a scripture reading from Miss Barbara Harvey, a niece. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, saints. Can we have... Everyone stand for the reading of God's Word. I will be coming from the 23rd Psalm, the Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness, for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, hallelujah, surely, surely, hallelujah, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Scripture reading from Miss Michaela, great granddaughter. Scripture is taken from Psalm 91, verse 1 through 6 and 16. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, 
and from the north sun pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that waketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. With long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. Amen. Amen.
all the way until they open for families and friends. Bear with me as I try to find words to adequately express and define what my beloved auntie meant to me. I was a lonely little girl, the only child for my mother. I came into this family because she married Mr. Herman Braham, who was Aunt Das's brother. I migrated from Jamaica in 1980, and it was quite a hard adjustment for me. Living in the islands where you were free, where neighbors were like family, to a life here in America, you know, where it's go, go, go. And so I was a latchkey kid because my mother worked two jobs most of the time, and dad worked too. So I was lonely until 1981 when Aunt Mae sponsored Aunt Das and brought her here. And then my whole entire world changed for the better. She was my friend, my aunt, my playmate, my secret keeper. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy would fuss. Dasa, you are playing with this child like you are a picnic. <laughs> Meaning, she was playing with me as if she too were a child. We would play hide and seek. But because she was blind, I wanted to make the game fair, so I would close my eyes. We would bump into each other constantly and fall out laughing and giggling. There was one time playing hide and seek. She got very good at it. It was very hard to hide from her. Even though she was blind, her hearing was quite astute. And even though I thought I was being a quiet little mouse, she would hear. So I decided, I'm going to outsmart Auntie this one time, because I would hide in the shower. But she would know and move the shower curtain and feel for me. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to get her this time. I laid in the tub with my eyes closed, holding on to the laugh. And here she came, move the shower curtain aside, and she's feeling, feeling, feeling. But Aunt Das was very smart. Don't take her as you see her. She said, okay. she find a new hiding spot. So Auntie says, I'm going to find her today. And what she did, she stepped in over the edge, put her foot over the edge of the tub and stepped in the tub to reach in the farthest corner of that shower. But guess what? She stepped on me. <laughs> and I'm telling you, because my eyes were closed, I didn't know what she was doing. We gave each other a fright, and we sat on that bathroom floor, and I'm telling you, we laughed for it seemed like at least 15, 20 minutes, till tears poured out of our eyes. Mm. She was my playmate. She was my secret keeper. In the summer, mommy and daddy said, you cannot go outside. This is New York. We lived in the Boogie Down Bronx. You know, our neighborhood was changing. It wasn't always the safest. I had to stay inside. Auntie would say, here's a dollar, here's five dollars. I'll cover for you. Mommy and Daddy called, because they would call during the day to see what you were up to. You better answer that phone. She says, I'll cover for you. Go down to the corner store, Go buy some chips, buy some candy. Other times she would send me right around the corner to buy pizza. Because you're a child and you love those things, you know. Mommy and Daddy have since passed away and they never knew. <laughs> that was our summer fun. You know? As I grew older, as teenage 
do, you have crushes on boys and young men. Aunt Dasa was the only one I could talk to because mommy would open up her eyes and look at me. Go and sit. What? <laughs> I dare not tell her that I had a crush on someone at school. But I could tell Aunt Dasa. And she would listen. She wouldn't judge. She would guide. She would encourage. She was my secret keeper. In later years, as I grew and moved to Florida and I got went to college and got married and had children, Aunt Das is a family historian. All who know her knew that her memory mm, was better than the best computer ever invented. <laughs> she knew everyone's birthday, when their children were born, when they graduated, when they got married, and when they passed away. She was a family historian. And even though she didn't have the opportunity to meet my children, she knew their names. She knew their date of birth. She knew when they graduated school. And so every conversation, she was able to ask me by name how they were doing. And if I told her one story about them or the other, she would follow it up and ask me, so how did this work out, or how did that work out? You know, she loved us deeply. She loved God. Every conversation we had, and we spoke often, every 10 days to two weeks, and if one of us was unwell or going through something, having going through a challenge or a trial, we spoke more frequently than that, you know? And uh, she would always pray with me, encouraged me to seek the Lord in whatever trial and tribulation life was sending my way. She had every reason through her blindness to maybe, I don't know, be resentful of the lot that she was given in life, or even angry, but she never was. She was the sweetest, kindest, most gentle person Know, and I will miss our conversations dearly, but I knew she was ready. She always ended our conversation with, Lord, whenever my father calls me home, I'm ready to go. I am waiting on him because I am ready. And so even though in my humanness, I shed tears. She's where she wants to be which is in the arms of her Savior. Amen. And even though I cry, I thank him. For she was such a beautiful gift in my life. And I have all these beautiful memories to take out and unpack and laugh about and smile about and remember whenever I think of her. She was truly a gift to me. Thank you all for allowing me to share her memory. And to the family, I want to say, through my trials and tribulations, there's a particular scripture that I would like to share with you that gives me strength from day to day, and that's 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 through 10. And it reads, and this is the scripture as written by Paul. It says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. May God's grace rest upon each of us as we lay our beloved to rest. His grace is indeed sufficient. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. 
Um, greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. Um, my name is Hyacinth Robinson Clark. Um, Aunt May is sister in law. My brother has been as well. Um, I met Hardas when I came to the United States in 1986. Me and my brother Simeon and my daughter Renee, six at six at that time. <laughs> um, America was very strange to us, especially me, with a six year old child. I remember when Aunt May, we got to the house, Aunt May introduced me to Andas. And at that time, you know, back home in Jamaica, you have to have respect. And I got there and I stretched my hand to shake hers. And I realized that she couldn't see. But Aunt May hold my hand, uh, hold her hand to mine. And I'm telling you, my heart and her heart met like one. Um, it's like the Spirit of God was right there through her heart, connecting with man. And from that day, I tell you, she's an angel for me and my daughter. No matter what goes on for us, she couldn't see me, but she know I was there. She instilled me to tell me that America is Sodom and Gomorrah <laughs> in the Bible. And I said, oh, that's Sodom and Gomorrah? I didn't understand what she meant. But then she tell me, hey, tell me where the scripture is. And I must read it. But then she said, don't be afraid, my daughter. Everything that you need is in this country. You only have to be brave and have patience and don't follow behind no one. Trust God and he will give you what you need. And make sure you instill your daughter to have manners and respect and she will be a good child. No matter when I go to work and come back, even if I don't even open my mouth, she know I was there. She, many times I tip it over to pass her. And she said, she called me little. She said, little, I know you, dear. Why are you hiding from me? <clears throat> but I wasn't hiding, I was just kind of playing a game with her. But saying this to say that, God created us as one. This is the only time we have when her family passed on together. You know what I pray? That one day sooner or later, we will have more time to visit them and come and hug them and give them flowers when they are alive and tell them how much you love them instead of wait and be still this time. I know our spirit is here and I know the love that each and every one of us, she gave us, is awesome. But from now on, I pray that things will change, that he will go the other round. For the family and our son, God have her in his bosom. Because I know he gave her to you. And, and he gave um, you to her as a blessing. So cherish that because he will never let. Memories are a blessing from God. And no matter how bad it is, it's still a memory. And family is a blessing from God. No matter how bad your family is, is your family. And family will never change. And this is love, because love is of God. Because God gave his son to die on Calvary cross for us. And because of that, our dust is right here with all of us. Yes. God bless you all. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. I remember the first time I met Aunt Das. I must have been over 50 years ago. My first trip to Jamaica, Irons Mountain. Oh, such a beautiful, serene place. And I remember Aunt Das. And she was standing up on the hill, and my father said, Oh, 
Hadassah's blind. But the way she was going up and down, it went in one ear and out the other because she just walked around like she knew the area like the back of her hand. So I came to know Aunt Doss and I remember the first time I went to the bathroom. If any of you are familiar with Jamaica, the bathroom is outdoors and you have to walk a little bit down to get there. So Aunt Doss said, I'll take you, I'll take you. And I said to myself, well, what is this? You know, being born in England, where the bathrooms are right there, here I was following Aunt Doss to the bathroom. So she said, oh, the bathroom is in there. So I opened the door, and to my amazement, oh boy, there was a round seat and a big hole, and Aunt Doss, <laughs> she said, I've got you, I've got you. I said, Lord, I'm a fool through the hole, and nobody's going to be able to see me. But she held on. That was my first experience with Aunt Doss. And through the years, as my previous family have said, she was a world of wisdom, a world of knowledge, a world of faith in the Lord. I remember the last time we had a conversation, it was February, and she was sitting in the hospital on a medical floor, she had IVs going and she was sitting in the chair. And up until then, I never knew Aunt Doss's name. So I called my Aunt Mavis. May, what's Aunt Doss's name? What do you mean you don't know Aunt Doss's name? Her name is Ruby Brown. <laughs> so, First time I knew Aunt Doss's name was Ruby Brown. So my husband and I, we went into the room. So I said, Ruby Brown. She was trying to catch my voice. Then I said, Miss Bertha's donkey, and laughed, and she knew who it was. She had an excellent sense of hearing. I remember the conversation that we had. It comes from Philippians 4, 11. She sat on the chair and she said, Babs, no matter what state I'm in, I've learned to be content. Ooh, what a teaching moment, whatever state I am in. So she was peaceful as she sat speaking to me, not knowing what was going on, but that her arm might have been uncomfortable. She was in unfamiliar surroundings, but her strength, her strength, her belief in God. And it's one thing to believe in God, but it's another thing to know God. Amen. And my aunt, she knew the Lord. That was her strength. I thank and I praise the Lord for who she was in my life. I remember in ICU, when they took her off the vent that was helping her to breathe. And the day she came off, I, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if it's your will, let her come off in peace. And she came off and began to breathe on her own. And I said, hallelujah. When I heard that she was transferred downstairs, coming out of ICU, I said again, hallelujah. That night when I heard she passed, I said, hallelujah. Ho! She is going to see the king. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! She went on to see the king. I thank and I praise the Lord for who he is and who he was in her life. No matter what state I'm in, 
I have learned to be content. And to her family, Cordelia and Melvin, oh my God, blessings, blessings. Yes. I think of the story in the Bible of Ruth and Naomi. When I heard they haven't been on vacation for 30 years, 30 years of devotion, 30 years of love, 30 years of going and coming every day, she was loved, she was cared for. So on behalf of my father, Leslie Brown, who unfortunately could not be here today, I say my prayers to you, my prayers, because it is a loss, but she was a teacher, and the lesson I've learned, whatever state I'm in, I have learned to be content. Amen. Amen. she heard helping Ines Mountain. She said, I am Jack Campbell. It is with much pleasure that I share with you my memories of our dear departed sister, Adassa Brown. First of all, I must mention that Frank Stevens and I were co-workers in the gospel in 1961. Frank and William Sneddon came from the United Kingdom to Jamaica in 1922, just over 100 years ago. Frank and I were invited to Irons Mountain to preach the gospel in that hilltop village. For two or three nights per week, we shared the precious word with those who came to listen, including the Lawrences and a blind lady named Adassa Brown. They listened with interest, received a revelation of the truth as it is in Jesus, and made their choice to serve God and to walk in his way. In a small Sunday morning fellowship meeting, Adassa would share with us the helpful thoughts she received from the scripture that someone read to her. It continued thus until I learned of a blind friend, Leslie White, at Alderton Village, who read the Bible by an embossed lettering that a lady had taught him. This very simple system was developed for older blind folks. I made cardboard forms of the few letters that represent the alphabet, depending on the position held. I would say to Adassa, do you remember the capital A with the point up? Then I would guide her finger to the embossed letter. Now turn the point down, and that's a V. The point to the left, and you have an E, and so on. Adassa learned fast, and there were times she'd clap her hands with joy as she progressed in reading. From England, I sourced several books of the Bible of the moon system for her. After migrating to the United States, I understand that Adassa learned Braille. She has been an inspiration to many in her zeal, courage, and faithfulness. She lives on in many hearts. I just want to say that Miss Adassa has been a great friend of mine. And I've known her from childhood, and it was our home that the Sunday morning fellowship meetings that he mentioned, that's where she used to meet. So I've known her quite some time. I was glad to meet her again when we I saw her here. And in that a year since the pandemic, when she couldn't read anymore because, of course, she had neuropathy in her fingers and she couldn't feel for the braille. And so I started reading the Bible with her. And it was such a joy, three, four times for me to read with her and listen. And as we've heard before, all that has been said is so true. And as you heard, she has a fantastic memory. She would sometimes start with me and would say, we would read something, and then the next time I'm reading, I said, well, where do we carry on? And she would know exactly. So I'm going to miss her. Yeah. I do miss her a lot. And the last time I spoke with her, that's exactly what she said. She was ready. 
and God, if this illness, she said to me, is to take me home, then I'm ready. I've been waiting. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I live in Maryland, and I said we are two first cousins. Mavis and Andasa, we, and the family, we grew up together in Jamaica Islands Mountain. And we used to get into a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. And her mom used to beat our butts. Mm -hmm. I was, although she was my favorite aunt, and I think my mother was their favorite aunt. I had something written here, but before I read it, Aunt Asa and I corresponded quite often on the phone. Sometimes she called me and she said, Girl, I haven't heard from you in a long time. And I said, Aunt As, I'm so glad to hear from you. She always give me uplifting advice. We talk a lot. I want to know anything. She was a family historian. And I could call her up at any time. My brother Stanley, he died year before last, and when I talked to him, I said, Stanley, how old are you? He said, Ox and Dasa. <laughs> and I called and Dasa, she said, what's he talking about? I'm two years older than him. And she tell me exactly when he was born <coughs> and everything. A lot I didn't know about my mother and my father. And she, I called her up and I asked her any question I wanted, and she would tell me exactly what I wanted to know. She was a historian of the family, and I missed her. We laughed. She always said, honey, I'm just easy. I'm here like Miss Becca Donkey. And that always cracked me up, and I said, yeah, and that's, I've heard that expression in a long time. But one thing I know, she loves the Lord, and she always tells me that she's ready when God is ready for her. And her voice sounded like she was 16 years old, talking to her. You would know that how old she is because she sounds so young and energetic. And I was, I, I am deeply sorry because I was planning to come to see her before he, she even takes sick this last time. But, you know, I was sick the whole time for COVID and I, my daughters, they won't let me travel alone. So, and they didn't have the time at that point. So, anyway. Um, my heart aches, and I write this down. I'm talking about, I did not know that she was, her name was Ruby, because everybody called her and And I remember, I think the first time I, I sent her a check and I write, uh, Adassa Brown on it, and she said, <laughs> She called me and said, you know, my name is Ruby. I have a niece named Ruby. I said, I never knew. I thought you were all that. You were that. So that's it. Um, it's written here. Cousin Ruby, I call you on Dasa. Thanks is not sufficient to express how I feel about you. As I am writing this, I still think I am asleep, and this is not real. I ask the question, God, is this real? Yes, Ethelyn, was his answer. I guess God saw you getting tired and knew you needed the rest that only he can give. So he put his arms around and whispered, come rest with me. A golden heart has stopped beating and you and your hard working hands put to rest. Father, I thank you for my cousin. Although she was blind, you gave her memory like an elephant. She was the historian of the family. You gave her the ability to see the good in others. 
cousin, you love the Lord. I was always talking about, oh, God's been good to you. I am going to miss you, your sweet, smooth voice. With grateful heart, I thank, I say thanks to you, Aunt Dasa. Despite all sadness that you are no longer here with us, this is not goodbye, but see you later on the other side. We will cherish the memories we have the pleasure of sharing with you. May God grant you eternal peace in his presence where there will be no more pain. Amen. Amen. I believe we have one more tribute, and afterwards we'll hear the obituary from Odessa's niece, Mrs. Harvey. A pleasant morning to each and every one. Greetings to our moderator and members of the clergy and to everyone that is gathered here this morning. I am Keisha Brown, and for those who do not know, I'm the daughter of George Lynch, Linford Brown, and it is so such a privilege and an honor to be here. I could not let this day pass without coming to show my last respect to my aunt, Aunt Das. My memory, since I was a child, I remember she came to Jamaica where I was, and she would make some things, embroidery and so forth, and I would always wonder, how did she do this, knowing that she's without physical sight? When I came here in 1999, and whenever we did speak on the phone, which was not quite often, but one thing that I can say, which is synonymous to what everyone else, my cousins, have already expressed, she had a very astute memory, and she would remember even my mom's side of family. So really, I stand here today as a representative of my father and my siblings who are not able to be here, and my mother, Bernetta Brown, to say that the shared memory that we have collectively of Aunt Das will forever live on as her legacy continues to flow through each and every one of us. We have a common denominator, or a common factor, which I can say is Jesus. And I'm pleased to know that my aunt was a servant of God. She has run her race. She finished the course. And she's absent from the body, but we know that she is with the Lord. And for that, we can have this as a celebratory occasion of life because she has just transitioned to the better life in which we all hope and anticipate to get to one day. So today, I express my sincere condolences to my family and it is so good for us to reconnect. The waters may have brought distance, but we are drawn now through the blood of Jesus. And I thank God that I am here to see you all. And may the God of all comfort comfort your hearts. May he establish you. May he settle you. And as Ephesians 6.10 says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We can do nothing in our own strength, but with the strength of the Lord, all things are possible. May he comfort you, may he strengthen you, and may he continually be with you. And I love you all. God bless you. I will be reading the obituary. Ruby Adasa Brown was born to parents Levi and Rachel Brown on December the 1st, 1927, in Irons Mountain, St. Anne, Jamaica. Ruby attended Irons Mountain All-Age School. 
1946, she gave birth to her son and only child, Melvin Lawrence. After having surgery for cataracts in the early 1950s, she became blind in both eyes. That did not stop her from caring for her child. In fact, she also took care of her nieces and nephews. She was very active and independent. She would cook, clean, cut firewood, and carry water on her head. Ruby provided for herself and her son as a domestic worker by washing clothes and cleaning. In 1981, Ruby migrated to the United States of America where she resided with her sister, Mavis Byfield. She went to a training school for the blind in Manhattan where she learned to read and write in Braille and to sew. She would sew aprons and various items to give to friends and family during the holidays. Ruby later became employed with a blind organization in Manhattan to assemble perfumes. She was also active church member traveling to New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Connecticut to various conventions. In 1990, after her son came to the USA, she then resided with him and her daughter-in-law, who passionately cared for her until her passing at the age of 96. Ruby was a talented sewer. She would spend her days at the Helen Keller Services for the Blind Senior Center, where she got to socialize and sew. In November 1998, she was featured in Women's Day magazine in an article titled, Seeing is Not Believing, where they showcased her basket of snowsuit babies. She stitched and stuffed all the dolls in her basket, which were a hit at their holiday bazaar. Ruby Brown was a beautiful, resilient woman with a vivid memory and the heart of a warrior. She was a great conversationalist, always offering words of encouragement to those who she encountered. Left to mourn our son, Melvin Lawrence, daughter-in-law, Cordelia Lawrence, Sisters Mavis Byfield Alvin, Daisy Brown, brother Leslie Brown, granddaughters Sarah Lawrence and Grace Nakari Osaro, six great grandchildren, one great great granddaughter, and a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. Ruby Adasa Brown will truly be missed. May her soul rest in peace. In the fifth chapter of Ephesians, we find these words written. Speaking, verse 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spirit. Any time that I visited with Odessa, or the few times that we were together in a little Sunday morning worship service over in Springfield Gardens, or if I happened to talk with her on the phone. She had a song, a song in her heart. She could still read clearly what the Lord had written on her heart. A word comes to my mind when I think of our sister Odessa. Encouragement. To encourage is to put courage in you. This courage is to take courage out of her. But she had an uplifting song. I knew a man, and when he was in the army days, sometimes he said we were on a march, and we would get so weary. And then one of the troops would start to sing, 
And then the other troops would begin to chime in with that. And we would forget how weary we were. And uh, he said, I want to always be ready to start the singing. And that is my very, one of my prized memories of our dear sister, Adasa. Read a couple of verses from Psalms 1 and Blessed is the man who <clears throat> walketh in, not in the counsel of the ungodly, but standeth in the way of sinners, nor standeth in the, in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the, lo the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaves shall also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doth shall prosper. And in that fifth chapter, the psalmist began that chapter with, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King, my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice thou shalt hear in the morning, O Lord. And in the morning I will direct my prayer unto thee. And will look up. Thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. And so on. Now these are some of the verses that was coming to mind when we heard the passing of our sister Edessa. It wasn't very long ago that we saw her in the emergency or the ICU room there at Mercy Hospital. <clears throat> she wasn't really able to communicate. But there was a, a recognition when we told her that there were better things to come. There was a recognition that this was the day that she was living for. And that we could say that the Lord would never leave her. She wasn't alone. The Lord would never leave her, nor forsake her. And so like we just heard and others have mentioned, oftentimes when we'd go, go to the home to visit, but that's so. so. You often when walk away feeling that like she gave you more than you gave her. You walk, you know. the aide would come to the door, open the door, and would go to the back to the kitchen. Sit at the table. And we were we marveled often. She had a phenomenal memory. Toward the end of her days. She was listening to the, the chapter we would study. We'd study chapters, midweek study. I remember time and time again going to her. And she would have the study. We were in meetings like we heard. Wednesday night meeting, Bible studies, Sunday morning meetings. And she would have a verse. But in the Wednesday night we all studied the same chapter. And she could quote it verse by verse. And she told us many years ago of her, her experience, the surgery not going so well. And like we heard, she was not, she was not bitter. And I often ask myself, what would my reaction be? And it's wonderful when we see it in somebody else. But put it personal. And she never harbored ill feelings. Made the best of it. Read there in that ninth chapter of John. They asked Jesus who, about that blind man. Who did sin? He was born blind. Odessa wasn't born blind. And Jesus said neither he or his parents, but that the work of God would be made manifest in him. Adessa made it her life. Her relationship with the Lord 
And like it says, morning and night, my meditation will be upon thy law. And you will hear my prayer in the morning. She is very conscious. We, we heard that she heard the gospel. And she felt the need. And Jesus said, um, in John's account, he, he, he told them in that, is it the fifth chapter, he, he just said, search the scriptures and, and see if it's so. Uh, the 39th verse, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are that which testify me. And she heard a gospel. Now Jesus, he tells in that 10th chapter of John um, that he was the true shepherd and, and, and all that came before him, they, uh, the 10th verse, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. So she heard a gospel story unlike anything she had ever heard before. And she was encouraged in those meetings to search the scriptures. It'd be like somebody selling to a, it'd be like today, somebody selling us a house. And we'd ask for the deed, and they said, no, it's all right. It's all right. You just trust me. Most of us wouldn't proceed. We want the deed. We might have the mortgage on the house the bank or the financial organization would hold the deed until we pay the house off. But we know that there is a deed. And Odessa, she put her trust in something that she could search the scriptures and see if it was true. And that she wouldn't be robbed. And she wouldn't be stolen from. She entrusted her soul's keeping in the gospel in which she heard, and it changed her life. We, we, we appreciate the human attributes and characters, but the Spirit of God being recreated in her, understanding that God gave life with a purpose. God is glorified today when we allow His Spirit, the Spirit of His Son, Jesus, to dwell within us. And, and she manifested that. Humanly, all we can do is take our hats off. That, that, that experience, that human experience with her blindness. But she also knew that she was spiritually blind. And she wanted to see. And she, she's thankful, and we're thankful, that uh, she was willing to let God open her eyes. And so today, like we could tell her that day at the hospital, that better things are, are ahead. She, she lived for this day, and we're thankful God will be with her for all eternity. It's just the beginning of what, a continuation of what she started in this life. And we're thankful it's not an end. The grave is not the end. It's just a continuation. So may God help us that we too could have that same hope, that relationship with God, and that we would be those that would be searching the scriptures to see if it were so that we would trust in something that is true, lasting, eternal. We'll turn over this portion of the service to the funeral directors, and they'll dismiss us.
We'll proceed then. Sorry. We'll, we'll close uh, this part of our service with God's Word is so pure. And you find that on that sheet number 29. My apologies. <clears throat>
remain seated until you are directed to come forward. Uh, we'd like to, uh, kill. we're going to be a little early, so after the viewing, we'd like for everyone to just remain here until it's time to leave uh, for about another half an hour because we're running a little early, okay? Thank you.